Hi everyone, today I'm gonna to show you how to make these beautiful watercolored street lamp paintings for Christmas. You can make this a card, you can make it a bookmark, you can make it a wall hanging, or it can just be a page in your scrapbook if you're just looking for a project to relax with. So let's get started. I have my Arches watercolor cold press block here. I like the blocks because you don't have to tape down your area. And I'm just starting to sketch out my street lamp with a 2H pencil. And I'm just going to make a, um, a rectangle that's wider at top um, to start making the little area, the yellow area of the lamp. And then I'm going to add the top of the street lamp next. So I'm just going to make some diagonal lines peeking out from the side and then join them with a horizontal line across the top. Now I'm gonna map out where I want the top of my street lamp and just draw a horizontal line and then connect that both sides to the um, base of the street lamp that we just drew. And then I'm just going to add another little rectangle on top and then a little circle above that. And then that's gonna give us our little cap for the street light. Now I'm just going to draw a straight line down the center of the light. And I just used a, a watercolor card just um, to help me draw a straight line there. That's gonna be the pole for our street lamp. And now I'm just going to draw in the black lines on the face of the lamp. Just following, I draw one line down the center and then two diagonal lines on either side. And now I am going to connect them. So I'm gonna draw like the little frame on the inside and all it is are these little scoops that you're going to make in between each of the lines. And then that's gonna give you that design that you see on the right um, that just looks like, they look like little like half moons, I guess you could say. It's just a little design element. And then I'm just going to erase any of the lines that I don't need anymore. I'm using a thin mono eraser. I love that eraser for when I'm watercoloring. It's really, really thin. It lets you get into small areas. And I'm just going to fix up my lines here. And now we can draw in the little um, decorative railing um, along the bottom of the base of our street lamp. So I'm just drawing little curly cues on either side. It's really that simple of a design. And then we're going to go in and color them in black with our paint later. But I'm just kind of mapping out where the design is. And all it is, it's a curly cue on the left facing one way and then on the right facing in the opposite direction. And they are just maybe about a little bit wider than the base of that street lamp there. So they just peek out ever so slightly if you're just trying to figure out how much space to leave to add your little curly cue. And then I'm going to move on and just draw a little circle right underneath our little curly cues there. And that's going to be that little decorative um, ball that you see on the right. And I'm just making a little circle. And then I can erase any lines that I don't want to be there. And then I'm also going to draw in that little detail as well. Those are just the lines, the horizontal curved lines. Then I'm gonna draw in the rest of our pole. And to do that, I just um, extended out the line from the center. So I drew that line down the center just so I knew exactly where the center was. And then I just extended it equally on either side. It was easier to eyeball that way. Um, okay, now we're gonna draw in the bow. To, so to start, we have an oval for the center. And then we have the two edge, sides of the bow extending. And what they look like, are like just think of big fans on either side. So it starts narrow and then it gets really, really wide like a fan. And then I'm just gonna draw on the underside of the bow. So you just draw a half curved line, um, maybe about two thirds of the way down from the bow. And then that's gonna make it look like you can see a little bit of the underside of the bow. And you can clean up those lines if you like, just using a mono eraser here. It's my favorite eraser to use when I'm making watercolor sketches because it's got a real, real narrow um, tip so I can get into small areas and only release when I want to. 
And then once I like the shape of the bow, we can go on and draw the legs of the bow, I guess. So I'm just going to make like a wavy line going down on one side. And then I'm going to do the same on the other side as well. And if I don't quite like the shape, I'll just kind of clean up the um, shape as I go along. And then next we can draw in where we want the wreath to appear. So I'm just going to make these little bumpy um, lines kind of extending in a circular pattern, just mapping out where I want the outer edges of my wreath. And my drawing is pretty big, so my wreath is going right to the edges of the paper there. And then I'm just going to finally draw in our candle. So I'm just drawing a rectangle right in the center bottom of the face of the lantern. And then I will just add a little like curly cue on top to make the little flame. And it's just like a little, um, like a little upside down teardrop. Okay. Now I'm just going to erase the lines I don't need. So there are some lines of the pole where the wreath would cover. So I just erase those. I'm going to clean up the line on the inner part of the wreath there. It's that little curved line. Add some berries in some clusters. So these are pretty big berries, um, but it's a pretty big wreath. So I just thought I would go with it. And I'm just adding them in like wherever I think it looks like the wreath needs a little bit of detail. So I'm doing clusters of three. I have a couple stray berries. You can do um, clusters of two if you like. It's really up to you. And I'm just going to raise the inner part of the wreath just a little bit there for balance purposes. And now our sketch is done and we can move on to coloring. So I this is the palette that I'm using. So I just had some turquoise on my palette and I'm going to mix it with some Payne's blue gray. Um, with a little bit of water and that is going to be the background for our watercolor scene. So for watercolor you do it in stages. So our first stage is just going to be to lay down a base layer of, of color and we're going to focus on the background. So for the background, the background is only going to have one layer. So we need to um, make sure that we get it right the first time, but it's pretty easy. The look that I'm going for is I want the area around the lantern where it's shining to be very light and then the rest of the seam to get darker as you get towards the edges. So I'm just taking a one inch flat brush and I'm just going to wet the page a little bit, um, dropping in very, very light color. You could just use clear water at this point if you, if you like. And then I'm going to put some darker color, a darker wash along the bottom. So I'm just, um, dipping right into my paint there and then adding a little bit water where I need to. When I won't need to add water, I just dip my paintbrush right into the little canister of water that you see up at the left side of the screen. I have two canisters, one with clean water and one with dirty water. So dirty water is for washing um, the color out and clean water is whenever I need to um, pick up some clean water to apply to the, um, apply to the background here or to blend out some colors. So I'm just gonna keep working and working and working, um, making the edges darker by using the darker pigment that's on my palette and then dipping my brush in the water as I go along and then moving inwards, like kind of like in a stippling motion, just um, to get like a nice variety of color. In the end, I want it to look kind of misty and, and smoky. Um, I just love that misty look that you get from watercolor and I'm just gonna work on this a little bit more, adding that dark color along the edges and then um, just blending it in ever so delicately until we get towards the center, which is gonna be pretty light. And I'm making sure not to color over our focal image here. So you do wanna leave, if, if you can, it would be great to um, not get any color on your drawing at all, but you know, that's, not always possible. I definitely didn't achieve that here. So, but you do want to minimize that if you are going to get any um, of the background paint into your main drawing. Now I'm going to add the, a little light yellow wash to our the inside of our street lamp. And I want it to bleed out into the side. So that's why it's okay to um, let the wet bleed into the wet here. So for this first layer, it's going to be a wet on wet technique. 
and I'm just adding very, very light yellow. This is nickel azo yellow, very, very, very diluted with water. I'm leaving the little candle white. The candle's gonna be white in the end. And then I'm gonna mix some yellow gold or green gold um, into my yellow. And that's what we're gonna use for our first layer for our wreath. So I'm gonna keep watering down that yellow green um, pigment that I laid down and I'm just going to add it all over the area of the wreath trying to avoid the berries and the bow where I can and it's okay if that um, yellowish green bleeds into the blue a little bit because it's just going to help with the overall look in the end of making it just look like parts of the wreath are a little bit blurry and out of focus it's a really really pretty look especially if you're going to add snow later it'll just make it look like a blurry, misty, snowy, magical moment going on. Um, and I'm making sure to get some variations of color. So I like to have some areas of the wreath be the lighter green gold, some to be a little darker. I just want to get a little variety here because this is going to provide the base for our overall painting. So even though it looks like a mess right now, it's all these variations of color that's going to just make... Um, it looked really, really beautiful in the end. Now I'm just gonna drop in some sap green in different areas. This is also gonna help with our like misty blurry effect later. And it's gonna give us some variation of color to work with when we get to our second and third layers, which is where you'll see everything come together, sharp and in focus. Gonna add a little bit more concentrated yellow towards the bottom of that lantern just to help with the light effect going on there. And then that is looking pretty good to me. I'm just going to clean up the sides a little bit and I've let it dry probably for about an hour. And now we can go ahead and start adding our detailed um, color. So to start, I am using a smaller brush. So this is a size four um, pointed round and I'm taking some neutral tint, which is a black shade but I watered it down considerably so it's just light gray. And I'm gonna work in sections here because we don't want the watercolor to bleed into the different sections. They'll lose their definition if we do that. So after I lay down my base coat, I'm just gonna add a little bit more concentrated pigment of that neutral tint and just apply it along the bottom here and then up one edge. And this is gonna help with the shading and contouring. And again, this is just our first layer we're gonna add one to two more layers just to build up the color over time. And with watercolor, it's important to build up your color over time. Um, it's impossible to get the effects really in just one layer, um, sometimes even two. And if you try to put too much paint down, it can end up looking crusty and flat. So that's why we work in these layers. Now I'm gonna add the detail along the edges of the lantern. So I am just following my pencil lines here just to draw in those thin thin um, little pieces of the railing I guess or the metal that's covering the face of the lamppost I'm using a number two pointed round here I wanted to have a really really pointed sharp tip here so that um, my lines would look nice and clean and I'm just going to follow around my pencil line so I'm making that little curved section of the frame of the lamp post here. I'm gonna add my center line straight down. So you wanna have a, as straight a hand as you can here. One tip is to move at your elbow and not at the wrist. That'll help you get a straighter line. And now I'm gonna add some color to the little tip here, this little ball. And again, I'm working in layers, so, or working in sections. So I'm gonna keep those other two rectangles that you see on the lamp um, white for now because I want those other sections to dry before we add color there. Now we're going to work on this little base of the lamp post. It's just another rectangle. I'm just going to add some neutral tint there. Whenever you see me working with a black or a gray, it is that neutral tint color, just different um, concentrations of color. So sometimes it's very watered down. Sometimes it's, I'm just picking it up straight out of my palette. Now I can move on to 
adding some color to the lamp pole itself. So I'm just taking a wash of that neutral tint. Sorry that I'm um, out of focus here, but it's just um, a straight line going to the end of the page. Pretty simple. And I'm just going to go ahead and add that color to the center as well. So this is a little part behind the wreath that's kind of peeking out. So I'm just going to add a little wash in there as well. It's pretty light. And then I'll add a little bit more color in between our curly cues. So this is another piece of the lamppost that's kind of peeking out. Um, and now we're going to color in this little decorative piece on the lamppost. So it's just a circle. It's just a little, um, like a little bulb sticking out. And then we'll add some detail with those horizontal or vertical curvy lines in a moment. But for now, I just want it to be um, all a light gray shade. Now we're going to add the first layer of color to our berry. So I'm just taking a light wash of pyrrole red. This was just some dry paint I had on my palette that I just um, reconstituted by just adding some water and then it is good to go. I'm trying to leave a little bit of a white dot in the center there just to give it a little bit of variation of color, maybe look like there's a little bit of a shine coming off the berries. And again, we're going to work on increasing the effect of the shine when we add our other layers and then a little bit of white highlight at the end. But for now, I'm just working on getting a nice um, base layer down and then dropping a little bit more concentrated color in here and there just to, again, this just gives interest to the painting when you have different variations of color. It keeps it from looking flat of having the pigment all look exactly the same um, value throughout. Okay, now we're going to add the first layer of color to the bow. And I'm taking some perylene red here. Um, no real reason why I use that instead of the pyrrole red. Just picked it up and used it. They're pretty, um, pretty close in color. And I'm just going to sketch the outline or fill in the outline of the bow. So we're not going to worry about adding any detail now. We just want to get a nice um, coat of red all throughout. And if it bled a little bit into that little circle area, I should have used a paper towel instead of my finger, but I use my finger. Didn't ruin it, but if you can use a paper towel. And I'm just gonna add in the color. And then I'm going to add in the color on the other wing of the bow as well. Just filling it all in. Just tracing my pencil lines at this point. We're not going to worry about adding any detail because we can do that at the end when we um, get to our next layer. And then I'm going to add some color to the little legs of the bow as well. And then just make it a little bit lighter on the edges or on the ends of the bow. So I just will either dip my paintbrush in water or dip it along the um, paper towel just to get some of the pigment off when I want to do that. I think I'm going to do the same thing here as well. Just filling in the legs of the bow. And now I'm going to add a little bit of more color onto that little bulb there. I'm just taking a light wash. I think maybe some of the red had bled into there, so that's why I had to clean it up a little bit. Um, and then we're just going to add the color to the center of our bow. And I'm going to leave a little bit of white all around just so that it doesn't bleed into the edges. And it's going to help me at my detail layer by leaving a little bit of white space there. And now I thought let's add a little bit more color, a little wet on wet here for the bow. So I'm just adding in some perylene red. That is much more concentrated than the red we first laid down. And I'm just going to concentrate it in the areas where you would have um, some contouring. So like if I want it to look like there's a little ruffle or wrinkle in the bow, I added a little color 
I made sure to add a lot of color right on either side of the knot in the center because that would look darker. And then also underneath um, the bow as well, it would cast a shadow. So it would be a little bit um, darker as well. So that's why I added some more concentrated color there. And I'll just pull it out with some clear water on my paintbrush. And then just fixing up the edges here just until it looks pretty. That's really the standard I was using. <laughs> And then we'll add a little bit more color to the berries. So I have that concentrated pyrrolene red just going around the edges. And then I'll just pull it out with some clear water. I'm gonna do the same there, just reaching right into my little paint tin, applying the color to the berries. And then once I get a few done, I will go ahead and dip my paintbrush into the water and just pull the color out towards the center. And again, that's just to give them a little bit of interest, make them look rounded. Now we're going to finish up our lamp post. So this is our final coat, I believe. So I'm taking some more of the neutral tint. This is a more concentrated um, version of it, meaning there's just less water and I'm using a smaller brush. I'm using a two. So as you add your layers of color in watercolor, typically your brush will get smaller and your paint will become more concentrated as you build up the layers. That's gonna help um, the piece just really come into focus because it's with these, this detail work that we're doing now with this deeper color that's gonna start to make the image pop and start to look more realistic. Again, I have my number two brush. I'm just gonna add, deepen up the color here underneath the frame. So I'm just adding a thin strip of black and then I will just pull the color out with some clear water. And then I'm just gonna darken up my lines as well, this little part of the frame here. So I'm just taking my number two brush, some concentrated pigment and just going over the lines that I've already laid down. And then we'll add a little bit of color to the base as well, and then pull it out with some water as well. And then I'll add another layer of color to the little ball at the top of the street lamp, just going around the edges with a darker um, concentrated pigment and then I will pull it out with some clear water and if it looks like it gets a little bit too watery I can just go ahead and pick it up with my with my napkin there or just clean off my brush so it's dry and then pick up the water that way which is what I'm doing and now we can work on our curly cues so for this, I'm using my number two brush. Actually, we're gonna just add the detail to the little um, ball beneath the curly cues to start. So I'm using neutral tint, very, very concentrated, and I'm just adding my curved vertical lines here. And this is just gonna help to showcase that little design on our little street lamp there, our little metal design. And then I'm gonna pull out the color again with just a little bit of clear water, just so that it doesn't look like um, kind of cartoonish. It looks more realistic when we, when we pull the color out. And then I'm gonna add some color to these last two pieces of the lamppost that we haven't colored in yet. It's a very, very light wash of the neutral tint. And I'm gonna add it to both of those little areas. And then we can let those dry in a second and then we'll add a little bit more color. But for now, it's looking pretty good to me. So it's helping the different pieces of, of the lamppost to just, um, or the street light, to just stay distinct. So it doesn't just look like one big black blob it looks like there are different parts to the street lamp. I can add some more color to the pole right underneath the base. 
and then add a little bit more color to one side of the pole as well. And then I will pull it out with a little bit of clear water. And I'll do the same at the bottom of the base here as well. Just add the color, pull it out with some clear water. And then we'll add a little bit more pigment to these other two areas that we colored in before. So I'm just adding a little bit darker of a wash of that neutral tint. Um, just in a thin strip across, I want to leave some white space just again to keep the distinction between the different pieces so they don't just all kind of melt together. And now we can move on to our curly cues. So I have some neutral tint. And I'm just going to follow the lines that I had drawn on before and just make that little curly Q shape. And it's going to look like a really, really pretty metal design when we're all done. And I did speed up that section just, I think, by four times just to um, move the video along. <laughs> and now we can add in some detail to our wreath. So I'm taking some sepia. This is going to be for the little branches for the pine that we're going to add now. And I'm going to have some pine branches going in different directions, um, just looking like they're peeking out from underneath the wreath. And I'll just deepen up those um, branches if I need to. And then I'm going to take some of the sap green that was on my palette and just get a nice pointy tip on my number two pointed round brush and just add in the pine needles. So I'm just adding them in on a diagonal coming out from the edges of the branch in the center. And this is just our first layer. We will add another deeper, darker green shade for the pine needles to make them pop at the end. But for now, this we're just kind of sketching out the, um, the base of the pine needles. I'm just making sure that my tip is nice and sharp so that my needles can be nice and thin. And I'm just following along, um, just along those branches, just on either side, having my little needles coming out on a diagonal. I thought we needed a few more little pine branches peeking out, so I'm just going to add them. Just wherever I thought we needed a little bit of pine to show through, we're going to just add in some branches and then take our sap green and then add the little needles on a diagonal. And I'm just working pretty quickly here just to get it done. And then once we have all of our pine needles drawn in, then we can add the next stage of shading to our leaf, which is really, really fun and relaxing. This is probably um, adding the pine needles and then adding this next little wreath element was probably my most, uh, um, the most fun part of making this painting for me. I'm going to take some perylene green now. So this is a darker green and I'm just going to stipple in some color. So like around the berries, I'm going to just make a vague sense that those are little holly leaves around it. And I'm just stippling the color in, making little squiggly lines being sure to leave some white space in between so that that pretty green gold wash that we played we placed down earlier can show through and I'm just going to stipple the color in so we're not making leaves we're just adding um, just kind of the hint of greenery like the slightest bit of texture and that's going to really make the wreath start to pop once we add in this detail and it's with this darker perylene green you could also use deep sap green here as well. You want to be sure to be using a small brush. So I'm using my number two. And I'm just stippling, stippling, stippling wherever it seems like the wreath needs a little bit of um, attention. So like around the berries, I'm going to add a lot of those stipples. And then um, just here and there, I guess, making sure to leave some of that white or that green gold space showing through because that's what's going to really give dimension to our piece. Now I'm going to add in the shadow. So like the inner base of the wreath, I added some of that perylene green 
um, underneath the bow, we're going to add some deeper shadows as well with a paraline green. And then we're going to do our last thing, which is to add some paraline green pine needles to our little um, pine branches. And this is going to help to make them pop as well. And I'm just loving how this wreath is looking now. It's really starting to come to life and look three-dimensional with all these different layers of colors that we've added. And I'm going to add a little bit more stippled color with some very, very dark concentrated paraline green in some areas. And this is also going to help to um, make the wreath pop and just kind of come to life by adding these deeper, darker little areas of color and shadow. Going to deepen up the shadows underneath the edges of the bow. Add some more pine needles. And the trick to this is you want some areas of the wreath to look a little bit blown out, like you can't quite see what's going on. Some areas to be pretty well defined, like we have some of those pine needles peeking out. And I think that's really what makes a beautiful watercolor piece where you have this mixture of just like sharp contrast and then like blurry, misty, um, you know, background of, of the image. And that's kind of, I think, the hardest balance to achieve with watercolor. And I'm, you know, working every day to try to um, help my paintings get a better balance of the sharp contrast and then the kind of misty, blurry effect as well. So, um, you know, it's just something really fun to work with and grow with in watercolor, I think. Um, and the more you can get comfortable with leaving some areas looking unfinished or a little misty and blurry, it's the better and the, the more natural and free your pieces will look. But in the beginning, it's really, really hard. Um, especially for me, I noticed like all of my pieces looked like um, really, really detailed. Um, and something was off and I couldn't quite figure out what it was. And then eventually I realized it was the, the balance that, um, you know, the, the fewer areas that you have standing out or being defined in watercolor, then the, the better, the more beautiful, the more artistic your piece will look. Okay, so back to the painting. So I'm just going to add a little bit more contrast to the lamp itself. I'm just going to add a thin line of color there, just the black and you see the difference that that makes. It really helps the piece to pop when you have just that contrast of color and it's nice and sharp. And then I'm going to add a little bit more color right to the base there. And now I think it's time we can work on the bow. Seems like it is dry enough. So I'm going to take some Paraline Maroon now. And this is the shade I'm going to use for my detail work. I'm using, again, that small number two brush. And I'm just going to apply a thin line of color on either side of the knot in the bow. And then I'm going to draw in the little bottom of the bow there that we saw or that we drew in with pencil earlier. And we're going to make the entire inside or the bottom of the bow um, just one shade with that Paraline Maroon. And as you can see, the bow now, it's starting to pop and really come to life when you can see that dimension and that underside just peeking out. So I'm going to do the same on the other side, just following those lines I had drawn earlier. It's just like a little oval at the bottom. And then I'm just going to fill in that whole area with my Paraline Maroon. And that is looking beautiful to me. And then we're going to build out that color from either edge of the knot as well. And I'm just going to also add a little bit of the dark concentrated color to the edges of the bow. And then I'm going to add some more wrinkles into the bow just by adding some little lines of color there, like peeking out from the knot towards the center. And that's going to just help to... Um, make it look like it's kind of wrinkly, maybe a little bit of 
Maybe it's a little shiny in the, the light of the street lamp. And I'll just pull out the color with some clear water. And it's starting to slowly but surely our little bow is coming to life. So now we can add a little bit more shadow on the tops of the legs of the bow, the part that's peeking out from underneath the bow. That's going to be a little darker because it's going to be in shadow. So I'm just adding that perlene maroon and then blending it out with some water. And here I decided I wanted the edges of the bow or the ends to be really, really light just to make it look really washed out. Um, so I'm not adding any more color to the bottoms of the bow. And then in the center, I'll add a little bit more of that perlene maroon being sure to leave some white space in between just so that again um, the little pieces of the bow don't run into each other they look like they are distinct from one another and we'll just clean up the color there and now we're going to color in our candle you could use white gouache I decided to use my white gel pen here and I'm just coloring in the candle you could barely see it um, and then I'm going to take the white gel pen and just add a little highlight in the berry, that little area we had left um, open before. I just thought we'd go ahead and reinforce a little highlight, give it a little pop with the white gel pen. And then we will add a little bit of color to our flame. I'm using Aussie red gold here. Um, any, any orangey shade will do. And then I'm just taking some of the nickel azo yellow, very, very light and just um, building it out from the side. So it looks like there's a little bit of a glow. Very, very, um, very, very subtle effect there. And then I'm just gonna build up the bottom of our bow. I'm just gonna add one more layer of that perlene maroon right underneath the um, base and just pull it out a tiny, tiny bit, just to again, give a little bit more definition to that bow. And a little bit more definition to the edges of the bow here, or the edges of the knot, just adding a little bit more dark color to really make it pop and to make it look like the wings of the bow are nice and fluffy and standing up nice and rounded and that's it so if you would like to add snow you can do what I did which is I took a white gel pen and I just added some large dots like this and then I added some little flecks as well just like that by flicking my pen all over the page you could use white gouache and spatter as well if you would like to do that um, for the painting we did today I thought I would leave it without the snow um, and here is another version. So here are three different versions. Um, the differences are snow or no snow. And then the version on the right has more of a turquoise background, whereas the two on the left are more with that Payne's blue gray. And that's it, everyone. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you give this Christmas street lamp painting a try. It's so much fun. It's so relaxing. And I think it would make a lovely card or a lovely painting to hang in your home or even you could turn it into a bookmark if you like. Lots of different ways to use it or maybe it will just end up living as a page in your sketchbook. Totally up to you. Thanks so much and have a great day.